This is a video on simplifying non-perfect square roots. Uh, first, to simplify a square root of a non-perfect square constant, let's just talk about uh, simplifying for a number. Um, if it's a non-perfect square number, you have to take the square root of it. Uh, the first thing you want to do is rewrite the square root as a product, all right, as of the highest perfect square factor and another factor of the constant. So you're basically going to look at the number that you're taking the square root of, find the highest perfect square that's a factor of that number, and you're going to write it as two square roots, one being the perfect square, the other being uh, the non-perfect square. And then after that, after we have rewritten it, we're going to simplify the square root of the perfect square factor and leave the non-perfect square factor as it is. Let's take a look at an example. So for the square root of 24, uh, 24 is not a perfect square. There is no number times itself that gives you 24. So what we want to do here is really rewrite this as the square root of its highest perfect square factor times the square root of whatever factor is left over. And the highest perfect square, it's a factor of 24, is 4. All right, and then 4 times 6 is what gave me 24. So I have the perfect square in the first uh, square root symbol, the non-perfect square in the second square root symbol. And once I do that, I take the square root of 4, simplifying that is 2. No square root symbol is gone. We did the operation, so we don't write it again. And the square root of 6 doesn't simplify any further. There are no perfect squares that are factor 6, so we write it as 2, square root of 6. For the square root of 32, right, question, uh, question B here. All right, 32 is not a perfect square. There's a number times itself that gives you 32. So we want to break this down into the highest perfect square. It's a factor of 32 times... Uh, a non-perfect square. And 32 actually has a couple perfect square factors. Uh, 4 is a factor of 32 and that's a perfect square. And 16 is a factor of 32 because that's a perfect square. Uh, we want the highest one. So we want to take the square root of 16 times the square root of 2 because 16 is the highest perfect square factor. 16 times 2 is what gives me 32. Once we've done that, the square root of 16 we evaluate is 4. Notice we don't write the square root symbol anymore because we took the square root of 16. So we have 4 and then the square root of 2 just stays. It doesn't break down any further. Uh, if you didn't choose the highest perfect square, so in this case if we didn't choose uh, 16, instead we said, you know, I know that 32, all right, the square root of 32 can break down into the square root of 4 times the square root of 8. Well, 4 is a perfect square, so this would break down. You could break this down into 2 square root of 8, but realize that's not simplified completely because the square root of 8 can also be broken down, and that would make this equal to 2, and then the square root of 8 has a perfect square factor of 4, so it would be the square root of 4 times square root of 2, just rewriting the square root of 8 is square root of 4 times square root of 2. And now this breaks down to 2 times the square root of 4, which is 2 times the square root of 2 which is equal to 2 times 2 is 4, and then the square root of 2 just stays. And you end up with the same answer as we got up here. Um, but it takes a little longer to get there. So that's why you want the highest perfect square factor, because this way you know you simplify it completely right away. Uh, let's take a look at one more. Uh, the square root of 192. Uh, it might not necessarily be obvious what the highest perfect square factor of 192 is. Keep in mind the perfect squares, you know, are 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, and so on. You can keep going forever. And these are just, you know, the integer squared, right? 1 is 1 squared. 4 is 2 squared, 9 is 3 squared, 16 is 4 squared, 5 is, or 25 is 5 squared, uh, 36 is 6 squared, and so on. So you want to break 192 down into, you know, one of these, right, one of these perfect squares, and then another factor. And you want the highest one's a factor of 192. And if you try dividing 192 by some of these perfect square factors, uh, you'll find that the highest one that's a factor of it is 64. So I'm going to break this down to the square root of 64 times the square root of 3 because 64 times 3 does give you 192. Alright, there are other perfect square factors. You could have used 16 or 4. Those are also perfect square factors of 192. But the highest one is square root of 64, so we want to use that so we simplify it completely on the first shot. And the square root of 64, well that's 8, 
And then square root of 3 just stays square root of 3. It doesn't break down. doesn't have any other uh, perfect square factors. So really there's 8 square root of 3. All right, for variables, all right, for a variable to be a perfect square, it has to have an even exponent. So to simplify the square root of a variable with an even power, all you have to do is divide that, uh, divide that power by 2 and then remove the square root symbol because you've done the operation. All right, so anytime you see a variable with an even exponent, that makes it a perfect square. Let's take a look at an example here. So the square root of x to the 6th. Well, that's equal to, you know, I said that it's a perfect square if it has an even power. It has an even power, all right? So variable has an even power, it's a perfect square. All you got to do to take the square root is just say that's x to the third power. Remember, we get the third power here because it's just 6 divided by 2. And that'd be the answer. And the reason this works is because really x to the sixth is x to the third times x to the third, right? Because when you multiply, you add exponents, so that would give you x to the sixth. So if you're taking the square root of something, you want to know what times itself gives you that. So I'm thinking, you know, when I say the square root of x to the sixth, I'm saying what times itself gives me x to the sixth. Well, the answer is x to the third. Now, we don't have to write this work here every time. You should just know when you have an even exponent, you can divide that by two and then remove the square root symbol. For the next one, the square root of y to the 28th, well, that's an even exponent, so we know that it's a perfect square. And then to find the power, you just do y to the 28th divided by 2, which is 14. And for this last one here, oh, we have the square root of x to the 12th, y to the 20th. Now, you want to look at the inside and check to see if the whole thing's a perfect square. In this case, it is. x to the 12th is a perfect square because it's got an even power. And y to the 20th is a perfect square because it's got an even power. So we can break these down. x to the 12th dividing the power by 2 would give us x to the 6th. And y to the 20th dividing the power by 2 would give us y to the 10th. So the answer would be x to the 6th, y to the 10th. Notice this only works if you have an even exponent. If the exponent's not even, we don't just divide it by 2 and have like half exponents. Uh, we're actually going to break it down and simplify it, kind of like we did for uh, constants that were non-perfect squares. So we'll talk about that next. So, simplify the square root of a variable that is not a perfect square, uh, meaning a variable that has an odd power. That's what we're really talking about, an odd exponent. Uh, we want to rewrite the variable as a product of its highest perfect square factor, right? meaning write it as the highest even power that is closest to that number without going over, and another factor. So basically you're going to write this as the highest even power closest to the power that you have, and then the other factor will just be you know, whatever the variable is to the first power. Once you do that, you're going to simplify the first square root that has a perfect square in it. Uh, that will be the one that has an even exponent. And you're going to leave the non-perfect square factor as it is. So just taking a look at a couple more examples here. So if I have the square root of x to the 13th power, uh, this isn't a perfect square because it has an odd exponent. So I can't just take the square root right away where we divide it by 2. You can only do that if the exponent's even. So really what we want to do here is we want to rewrite this as you know, a square root of a perfect square, and then a non-perfect square factor. And what the highest perfect square that's closest to x to the 13th? Well, the highest perfect square factor of x to the 13th is actually x to the 12th power times x would be the non-perfect square. So now we force this to be an even exponent, and then we have just x to the first power left over because x to the 12th times x to the first power does give us x to the 13th because you add exponents when you multiply. That's why we're allowed to break this down like this. And then basically taking the square root of x to the 12th, now you're allowed to divide that power by 2 because it's an even number. So the square root of x to the 12th becomes x to the 6th. You don't write the square root symbol anymore because we already took it. And the square root of x can't be broken down. All right, The square root of x to the first power just stays square root of x. And that's it. That would be simplified. Uh, similar over here for uh, question B. We have the square root of y to the 25th. First off, y to the 25th, is not a perfect square. Don't get confused by this 25 up here. For a variable to be a perfect square, remember it has to have an even exponent. So even though 25 is a number that's a perfect square, the exponent here is on a variable, so it has to be an even exponent for this to be a perfect square. So you want to break this down. And you want to break it down to the square root of a perfect square and the square root of a non-perfect square. And the highest perfect square factor uh, of y to the 25th is actually y to the 24th power. It always be the closest even number to that to the odd power without going over, and then the square root of whatever is left over. Well, if we have y to the 24, we need 
times a y to get y to the 25th. And so we've broken it down into two square roots. One's perfect, one's not. Then we take the square root of the perfect one. Square root of y to the 24 is really y to the 12. So you do 24 divided by 2 gives you y to the 12. You don't put the square root symbol there anymore because you already took it. And the square root of y won't break down, so it stays square root of y. And now let's piece this all together. So to simplify square roots of non-perfect squares, the first thing I do is rewrite the square root as the product of two square roots. All right, so you have a square root for your perfect squares and a square root for your non-perfect squares. Once you've done that, the next step is to simplify the square root that contains the perfect square factors, and you leave the non-perfect square factors uh, square root alone. Let's take a look at a couple of those. So for this first one here, we got 18 x to the fifth y to the eighth, and we're taking the square root of that. Realize in order for something to be a perfect square, everything inside would have to be a perfect square. And right now we don't have that. So we want to break this down into perfect square factors in the first square root, non-perfect square factors in the second square root. This is a rewrite step. We're not actually taking the square root yet. We're just rewriting it in terms of its factors. We're not evaluating anything here. So if I have 18 here, uh, 18 is not a perfect square. But it does have a perfect square factor. The highest perfect square factor of 18 is 9. So we're going to write 9 here because this one here is going to be for the perfect squares. All right, so the highest perfect square factor of 18 is 9. And 9 times 2, which is a non-perfect square, so it'll go in the second one, is what we did to get 18. So we're breaking this down just like we did earlier. Uh, x to the fifth, well that's not a perfect square because uh, it's got an odd power on the variable. So we have to break this down to the highest perfect square. It's a factor of x to the fifth, which is x to the fourth power. Remember, you want the highest even number close to 5. Uh, and then you need an extra x over here, because x to the fourth times x is what gives us x to the fifth. And then y to the eighth. y to the eighth has an even exponent, so it actually is a perfect square. So I'm just going to write y to the eighth in the first square root right now for the perfect squares. You don't need any y's in the second one. And notice I didn't evaluate it yet. I'm just rewriting it, so I'm putting it where it belongs. The perfect square it goes in this first one. Once you have that, now we can evaluate this first uh, square root and break it down. The second one, you can't change at all because it's non-perfect squares. So for the first one, the square root of 9 is 3. The square root of x to the fourth, where we just divide the, variable by, or divide the exponent by 2. So it would be x to the second. And then y to the eighth, so dividing that by 2 gives you y to the fourth. And square root 2x stays square root 2x. And notice we didn't put a square root symbol over the first one because we took the square root. We did the operation. So that's done. Uh, similarly, down here, all right, we have 32x to the ninth, y to the thirteenth. We're taking the square root of that. Uh, this is also not a perfect square. 32 is not a perfect square. Either is x to the ninth or y to the thirteenth because they have odd exponents. So we're going to break it down into two square roots. The first square root is going to have the perfect squares, uh, the perfect square factors. The second square root will have the non-perfect square factors. So 32, breaking it down to its highest perfect square factor, and another factor would be 16 times 2. Right? 16 is the highest perfect square. It's a factor of 32. Remember, you want to pick the highest one. Even though 4 would work as a perfect square, it's not the highest. So you need to use 16. And x to the ninth, to break it down, we need x to the eighth power, it's the highest perfect square factor of x to the ninth, closest to even number to 9 without going over. And x, because you need 9 total, right? x to the eighth times x gives us x to the ninth. And then for y to the 13th, we're going to break this down as y to the 12th times y, because y to the 12th is the highest even number close to 13. So y to the 12th times y gives us y to the 13th. Once we're here, remember this is just a rewrite step that we did in this, in this first step. Now we're going to break down the first square root, evaluate it, and the second one will just stay the same. So the square root of 16 is 4. The square root of x to the 8th is really x to the 4th power. Remember, you're dividing by 2, so 8 divided by 2 gives you 4 there for the exponent. And then y to the 12th, 12 divided by 2 gives y to the 6th. And notice we don't write the square root symbol on there anymore because we evaluated it. And now square root 2xy just stays square root 2xy. And that would be your answer. Here are a couple for you to try on your own.